Hebrews chapter 4. Praise God. Let's come up and help me. No, you can see. Hebrews chapter 4. Is everybody there? In verse 11. Let's read it together. Let us therefore be what? Diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is what? Living. living. Everyone say the word of God is living. Amen. When God spoke, it didn't stop. The word of God is still moving. That's what sustains everything. The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. Are you ready for the next part? And a discerner of the thoughts and what? Intents of the heart. Intents of the heart. Many times we don't even know our own intent. Intents of the heart. There is no creature hidden from his sight. In other words, he knows everything. He knows every intent, everything that's done behind closed doors, and everything that you don't want people to know, he knows. Amen. And there's no hidden creature. No, no, there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are what? Naked, Naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must what? Give account. Wow. See, there's so many times we don't even realize that we're not really looking at our own intent. We're, we're looking at our own motive. Why do I do what I do? Am I laboring unto the Lord or am I laboring unto myself? Am I maintaining my identity? All of these areas are things that, that's why there's supposed to be self-examination. Am I making decisions and emotional decisions or decisions according to the will of God? Am I being pressed by individuals to make a decision? Or am I being impressed by God? See, we are at critical times again. We are hard-pressed on every side. And we must begin to discern what our decision making is. Because there's a ripple effect of every decision. And what you sow is what you reap. Amen. In John chapter 10. <clears throat> Let's speak it, please. Then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the what? I am the what? The door. In other words, I am the way of escape. Does everybody get that? He is the only way of escape. No other way can you escape the deception of the devil and the wrath of God except for through Jesus Christ. No other way. I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Do you know that the sheep know his voice? The sheep follow the shepherd. It says that the shepherd lays his life down for the sheep, but the sheep lay their life down for the shepherd. If there's truly a relationship. Verse 8. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, the way of escape. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And we'll go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come to accept to what? Steal. He comes to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a higher lane, he who is not the shepherd... One who does not own the sheep sees a wolf coming in books and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. 
because he's only concerned about money. I'll never forget one time I was volunteering to uh, help somewhere at a church. And I was help cleaning up. I think I was doing some carpentry work or something. And I heard the pastor in there saying, I'm only going where the best money pays me. I was flabbergasted. He was boasting to his friend on the phone. Yeah, I'm only going, I'll preach, I'm a good preacher. I'll preach wherever, as long as the money's right. I was a baby in Christ. And I heard that and was puked. It was terrible. And it was not a small congregation. I was amazed at what I heard. I couldn't believe that I heard it from someone that is proclaiming to be a man of God. I realized that was not a man of God. That was a hireling. And he was not protecting his sheep. I was amazed. Is everybody okay? In verse 15, or verse 14, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I also must bring. They will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Again, Jesus is the door of escape by his plan, which is called grace. That's the plan of God to escape. What does the thief come to steal? Your identity. He goes after your identity. He tries to get you out of God's presence because your identity is maintained in His presence. When you're out of His presence for a period of time, you lose your identity. And it's being replaced from a worldly identity. Does everybody understand that? Identity is vital. Because if you don't know who you are, the enemies know it also. Demons know it also. Does everybody understand that? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Identity theft. We hear about that all the time, don't we? Amen. Hallelujah. Only Jesus knows my PIN number. <laughs> In fact, I don't even know it myself. Hallelujah. That's why the devil can't get it. Because I don't know it. That's the beauty of praying in the Spirit. He don't know what you're praying when you're praying in tongues. <laughs> and you're praying the perfect will of God. And the devil doesn't know what you're praying. But everything else, he tries to interrupt. 2 Timothy 2, verse 11. Let's speak it. This is a what? Faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But what? Shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. That's what happens when people hang on the phone too long. Amen. And their message was spread like what? Cancer. I mean, this 
and Philetus are the sort. Who have what? They've what? They strayed. They strayed because they were on the phone too long. <laughs> they strayed because they were listening to a voice. They were allowing that voice to take them over. They strayed. How many of y'all know that you are hard-pressed? The enemy doesn't give up. Who have strayed concerning the truth. So they were making emotional decisions instead of decisions by truth. Saying that the resurrection is already past and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solemn foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who, know, who names the name of Christ, what? Depart from iniquity, depart from sin. Depart from yourself. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor. So does that mean you've got to maintain yourself cleansed from the latter? Yes. Or you'll lose your identity. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call out on the Lord with a pure heart. In other words, associations bring impartations. You will lose your identity by hanging around the wrong people. You will lose your identity by talking to the wrong people. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to what? Teach. Patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. In other words, God is trying to keep us from being snared by the devil to do his will, isn't he? But he's trying to bring a, a way of escape to those who've been taken captive to do his will. Amen? Captivity is sin. There's many times in sin where there's a false comfort. When conviction comes and it's not a, addressed, then God, God may convict one or two times. He doesn't usually convict three. He convicts twice and then steps away. Boom, boom, boom. And what happens is then there's that sense which the enemy steps in and begins to bring a false comfort in sin. So the person is actually in a false comfort in sin. The door is open for escape. God is trying to make a way of escape for that person. But the person maintains the false comfort of sin. And one day the door shuts unless they come out of that room. Because when that door shuts, it never opens again. Never. If you're caught in that room of false comfort and sin and that door shuts, you're gone if you die. Eternally separated from God Almighty. Is everybody okay? Okay. Many go back by making emotional decisions, not according to his will, but according to how they feel. The word says something. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. In other words, you seek counsel, you seek correction, you seek direction, and you get confirmation. It's amazing how many people make decisions not associated with the body. They make decisions according to the job, to the family, to Money and everything else, but not according to the body. When you make a decision, it should always be around your fellowship or a new fellowship. Has everybody got it? Is everybody okay? Other than that, it's called an emotional decision, and it's going to always fall into a trap every time. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3. Identity theft. 
in verse 8. Ooh, verse 7. 1 John chapter 3. Is everybody there? Little children, let no one what? Deceive you. He who practice righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the what? It's rebellion sin. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The reason why there's a word might is because you cooperate. You continue on. Has everybody got it? Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his what? For his what? His seed remains in him and he cannot sin. How many of y'all know the devil wants to steal the seed? Because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Many times the enemy comes to push, emotional push, tries to manipulate to get us into a position of separation from God's presence so that he can steal seed. Why? That seed is your identity. Galatians 3. Why? Because it is the seed of Christ. He likes to steal your identity even with religion. The word says, the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. The whole world is letter. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And only where the Spirit of the Lord is. I mean, I've heard many people tell me they love God, but their fruits stink. So they can't love God. They're full of words, but no fruit. Does everybody understand? Because you'll know them by the fruit. Oh, they love God. Yeah, oh, really? Then why you do what you do? He says, if you love me, you obey me. Amen. Is everybody okay? Verse 26. Let's speak it. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized in Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. But that's if you're in Christ. That means you must abide in Christ. You must cooperate with Christ. You must not only maintain his presence, but manifest his will. Only in Christ. Matthew 13. Identity theft. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Matthew 13, verse 18. Oh, yes. Do you realize how many people in the world still do not know who they are? Do you realize how many people who proclaim to be believers still don't know who, know who they are? See, now, once you really get into that place and you are solid of who you are, see, there's that place where you find who you are in him and then you maintain it because the enemy will do whatever he can to get you to re exchange your identity. And he uses many things to manipulate. Verse 18, let's speak it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then who comes? The wicked one comes and what? 
snatches. He steals away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received what? Seed by the wayside. But he who receives seed, do you understand seed? This is the character. This is the identity of Christ. The seed is the identity of who you are. But he who receives seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution or persuasion arises because of the word, immediately he what? Stumbles. Remember, who is the word? Jesus. And he is the seed, isn't he? Amen. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes what? Unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground, so do you must, you know, think about this. Even when Adam fell, what did the Lord have him do? Tend to the what? Ground. See, so... He who receives seed on good ground, whose responsibility is to make this temple good ground? Ours. So will the enemy try to contaminate your good ground? Amen. He who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and what? Understands it. In other words, uses it and puts it to practice. Executes it. Who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. The wicked one comes to snatch, steal the seed, which is the identity. Brings and what, when the seed is stolen, I got to share this with you. Then there becomes a lack of self worth. When the seed is stolen, the identity is removed. Self, lack of self-worth is imparted. As a new creation in Christ, old things are passed away. Oldness becomes more aggressive and we, the, the newness becomes not as aggressive. Now, I want you to know that your old man is worthless. Worthless. It's your new man that is worthy. It's worth. So what the enemy wants to do is steal your identity as attached to the new creation so that you feel worthless. Amen? And you know what happens when you sense that? What begins to occur then is not only do you come into a place of unworthiness, but it begins to breach God's love. And people begin to drift because they've lost their identity. It only takes a distance of losing identity. See, because when you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might, your identity of who you are is in him. But the enemy will try to bring your identity associated with everything else. Does everybody understand this? Remember, he comes to steal the seed of who is your identity. So what he likes to do is, that so many people put their identity in their education, in their talents and abilities, in their accomplishments and failures, in their spouses and their children. They, they utilize their identity with everything but him. That means they don't have an identity in him. They have it in the world. So there's a sense of worthlessness. There's a sense of breach of love. So what happens is they are moved from God's presence and they look for something to fulfill God's presence. So people run back to the word and lust, addiction. They try to educate themselves more and more and more. They try to work more and more and more. They try to do all kinds of others. They read a gazillion books. They do all kinds of things to try to find their identity. When their identity is not in the world, because we are not of the world, our identity is in him. And when it's in anything else, that person is disconnected. 
Does everybody understand? Romans 8. Do you know anybody's lost their identity? Oh, yeah. They're now roamers. They are roaming. They're trying to find themselves. I was a Roman Catholic one time. Man, I was Roman. I was trying to find who the heck I was. You, listen, somebody can't tell you who you are in Christ if they're not in Christ. Because you can't give what you don't have. Amen? Romans 8, is everybody there? Hallelujah. Identity theft. We certainly hear about that a lot these days, don't we? And they got all these kind of plans to protect your identity. Don't let them get your identity. You'll lose everything. I lost it all anyways. I'm not taking nothing home with me. Hello? But people find their identity in their automobiles, their motorcycles. They try to find their identity in the things they build. The things that they have accomplished. Anything that is, anything that is touched, that you are looking at, that's a part of your identity, is distant from him then. I'm telling you, the enemy is sly. Amen? He's the most cunning beast there is. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 28, let's speak it. And we know that all things, what? Work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called. Everyone say, I'm called. According to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son. Hello, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So we've got to continue to look at our intent, our attitudes, our motives. Are you acting like Jesus? Is that why people don't wear those bracelets anymore? What would Jesus do? Hello? Oh, God. You know. Yeah, they put it on every Monday and they take it off every Friday. Hallelujah. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Thank you, Jesus. Who also, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It's a good day to die. Yet in all things, we are more than what? Conquerors through who? Through him. So you cannot be more than a conqueror through yourself. Only if your identity is in him. Who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord, unless you lose your identity. Does everybody get it? It's not his love for you. It's your love for him. We are predestined to be conformed into his image. But I'm going to tell you what. Being conformed to his image is your identity, isn't it? 
So we're to act like Christ. We're to think like Christ. That's what it's about. We're to have the character and moral aspects of Christ. But the enemy wants to steal your identity. He steals the seed. And that's his job. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy, right? Ephesians 4. So what you want to be able to do, now I want you to grab hold of this. If you die in his image, you go home. If you don't, you don't go home. Woo. Remember, Jesus looks for Jesus. Where am I going? Ephesians 4? Amen. Is everybody there yet? Okay. Verse 1. Let's speak. I, therefore, or the what? I want to, how many of y'all want to be a prisoner of Christ? Amen. Amen. Therefore, a prisoner of the Lord beseech you to what? Walk worthy of the calling with which you are called. In other words, maintain your identity because it's worthy. With all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Whoa. Unless that seed is removed. Now you must remember the devil comes to steal that seed. Prisoners worthy of his calling. In 1 John chapter 3. Identity theft. You know, we lived in this world asking who we are. Why are we here? Where are we going? If you're still asking any of those things, then you must be careful because you're losing your identity. You don't, know, you don't need to know where you're going. If you need to know where you're going, then you don't know who you are. Does everybody get it? Why? Because your trust is in you, not him. He's going to unfold his will. You allow him to do it. Other than that, you jump before him and try to manifest his will, but it's really not his, it's yours. And then you really don't know who you are. Because those who know who we are allow God's will to unfold. We wait on his unfolding. And there's always confirmation of everything he unfolds. Because two is always witness. Amen? And it's not witness with a heathen. Hello? Amen. You know, my psychiatrist told me, yeah, right. Your psychiatrist is an idiot. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. First John chapter 3. In verse 1. Let's speak it. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be what? Called children of God. I mean, come on. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Do you know the Holy Spirit quickens you as the children of God? If there's relationship. Hmm. Verse 2, let's speak this. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Why? Because your identity is in him and nothing else. 1 Peter chapter 1. Look what happened to Esau. He sold his birthright for a bowl of porridge. 
No, he didn't. It was lentils, I think. <laughs> it was Campbell's soup. <laughs> Chunky. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody ate my porridge. <laughs> oh, glory. Where are you all going now? First, uh, First Peter chapter 1. I mean, think about that. He sold his birthright, his identity for food. It was an emotional decision. And he lost it all. He could never get it back. Never. And the lineage of Esau became wicked. Anyways, verse 22. Is everybody there? Since you have purified your souls in what? Obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren. Love one another fervently with a what? Pure heart. Having been born again, not of what? Corruptible seed, but what? incorruptible seed through the word of God which lives and abides forever because all flesh is as grass and all glory of men as the flowers of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. We are born with the incorruptible seed. We are the offspring of being conformed into his image and likeness. Genesis chapter 3. God, he had good plans for that garden. But the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. In Genesis chapter 3, in verse 1. Is everybody there? Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And when the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Her first mistake was to respond to the voice of the stranger. Hmm. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not die because God is a liar. What was he trying to do? Steal her identity. Watch the next verse. Then, the, For God knows that what? And the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like what? God, wasn't she already in his image? Amen. Amen. She was in the image of Adam. Adam was in the image of God, right? There was no sin in them. They had a free will. And the serpent convinced her to lose her, to exchange her identity. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So, of course, the woman partook, right? So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, and tree desire will make one wise, she partake of it and ate. She also participated with her husband, and the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves to make themselves covering. So this is pretty interesting. So the woman not only stole her identity, but stole her virginity. And they lost the presence of God. They lost self-worth. They hid themselves because they were afraid. And they covered themselves with fig leaves because they were ashamed. They were lost. 
They lost their identity. They lost who they were. Does everybody get that? That's why they hid, didn't they? She lost her identity. She lost her virginity. And she enticed her husband also. And they got removed from the presence of God. They could no longer eat of eternal life. They lost it all. Does everybody get this? It all starts with one conversation with the enemy. That's all it takes. One, okay. One conversation. My sheep know my voice, and they do not know the voice of the stranger. Not that you don't know it. You know it. You know it enough not to associate with it. Luke chapter 10. Hey man, how you doing, man? How you doing, bro? Praise God. Oh, you're a believer. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Baptist, Protestant, Pentecostal, whatever. How about Christian? My identity is not in a, a name of association, not even denom non-denomination. My identity is in him. And it must always stay in him. We fight for that every day. In verse 18. Would you read it? And when he said to them, what? I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you what? Authority to trample on the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by, shall by any means what? Hurt you. Man, when you know who you are. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that the spirits, in other words, the demons, are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. See, for Jesus, demons submitting was common. It was a normal thing. What's the matter? You can't cast that demon out? Sometimes you need to just look in the mirror. Amen. See what's behind your eyes. He's given us everything. The power, the cast out devils. He's given us freely everything. The word says that we're more than conquerors. We are in him. We are complete in him. Proverbs 23. Are you getting this? Identity theft. Proverbs 23, is everybody there? Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 7, I think that's it. Yeah, verse 7. Let's speak it together. For as he thinks in his heart, so he what? So as a man thinks, so he is. So who's going to mess with your thinking? The enemy. So what you focus your thoughts on, what you think about the most is what you become. You want to think about all of your sorrows, your miserable things, all of your fail failures, then you're identifying yourself in that. That's your identity. That's how the enemy plays you. Does everybody get it? He can outwit any one of us at any time, but if you're in the spirit, he cannot. For as a man thinks in the heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you eat, have eaten, will, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Again, what you set your mind on, you become. Colossians chapter 1. Hallelujah. You know, it's pretty, pretty amazing if you've seen the, the movie God's Not Dead and how that professor's identity was on his intellectual education. 
It's so powerful. If you haven't seen it in a while, I encourage you to watch it. It's good and refreshing. God's not dead. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. And that professor was all proud of his education and how much he knew. But he didn't know nothing. And, and one of the powerful things that the, the young kid that uh, he was uh, in the battle with, the kid finally said to the professor, why do you hate God so much? Because this guy was really hated God. Because, of course, something had happened to him that, you know, whatever. And the guy started explaining why he hated God. But he was trying to disprove that God was alive. So the kid finally just said, well, how can you hate something that's not alive? Powerful. Verse 21. Let's read it. And you who walk once were alienated and enemies where? In your mind by wicked works that now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you cooperate, you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Our worth must always be in him, not man, not talents, not abilities, not failures, not accomplishments, not health, not sickness, not finances, not titles, not materialism, not parenthooding, not children, not spouse, not works of compassion, but in him. Always in him. Why? Because loss of identity brings loss of self-worth, brings loss of life, and brings, I mean, loss of love, and brings loss of destiny. 1 Corinthians 13. Identity theft. That's why people go back out using again. They lose their identity. They're trying to find it in dope, in sex, in sin. But they're finding it, they're looking for it in a soft, a wrong presence. They're fighting for the things of the world instead of the presence of God. And that's, that, that's the only place you can maintain your identity is His presence. Because the word should always bring you into his presence. You should, it should give you a hunger and thirst to want to know him more. You should get to a point where I don't just want to read about you. I want to know you. Is everybody there? In verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. In verse 4. Is everybody there? Let's re speak it together. Love what? Suffers long and is kind. Loves, love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own. Is not provoke. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never, never, never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. All these things will come to an end, won't they? Whether there is knowledge, it will what? Vanish away. For we know that know in part, we also prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, who is Jesus, then that which is in part will be done away with. Verse 11, read it with me. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. 
And now a what? Abide. Faith, hope, love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. John chapter 15. In verse 1, identity theft. Don't give it up. Let's speak it together. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me. Does everybody see that? Abide in me and I in you. The more you abide, the more you know who you are. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. That means his presence. Does everybody get it? It's his presence. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If people will just abide more, make it their priority to constantly abide, they would maintain their identity. People would get healed more. There would be more freedom. There would be more deliverance. There would be more power. There would be more prosperity, more God's character. But the enemy always slips in and brings compromise, complacency, laziness, reasoning, and emotional decisions and then steals identity brings a loss of self-worth breaches the love of God and they lose their destiny verse 6 if anyone does not abide in me he is what cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are what burned if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. Let me tell you the greatest thing. The greatest thing is not to be the greatest father, the greatest mother, the greatest husband or the greatest wife. The greatest thing that you can leave behind is to be the man and woman of God and the identity of Christ that God called you to be in fulfilling his purpose and not our own. And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Little children, it is the... Last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Well, if you are abiding in Him, His presence is abiding in you. Let me tell you, you know all things. It doesn't make you any better. It allows you to be more discerning. It allows you to see through people, the physical and the spirit. It allows you to see the intents of individuals. Not that you're to expose them, but it's to protect you. Amen? You're allowed to see certain things to help people, sicknesses, spirits. People are discouraged or disappointed, despaired. Amen? Didn't Christ see all those things? Didn't he call them out? Didn't he expose them? Amen. That's who we're to be. We are left here only the body of Christ is restraining all evil. Once we're removed, there'll be hell on earth like people have never seen it before. And I won't want anyone to really go to hell. Hallelujah. 
verse 21. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. Do you understand that abiding is everything? That's what it's all about. The more the enemy can breach you from abiding, the more you begin to drift from your identity. Verse 26. These things I have written to you concerning those who what? Try to deceive you or steal your identity. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you carnally. But you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just that has taught you, you will abide in him. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed, let this seed grow root and bear fruit. Let it penetrate every part of our being and thoughts. Let it expose our intents. Let it expose those things that we identify ourselves with, that they may be removed so our identity can only be in you. And we ask this in the name of all names, Jesus the Christ. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.